Thank you for joining us on the Photo Flunky Show, episode 94. Today we're going to be talking about why nobody sees your social media posts. Hi, my name is William Beam. Hi, my name is Lee Beam. And before we start talking about why nobody's seeing your social media posts, I want to let you know that show notes are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 94, and you can get a transcript of the show there for free. There's links to subscribe there, or you can also visit our player at photoflunky.com. Also, reminder to get your copy of my free ebook. It's called Creative Portraits, and it is about the creative and emotional part of taking portrait photography rather than technical things. So it's not so much about lighting, it's about who the people are, what message you're trying to tell, and some of the composition and some of the elements that you want to put in their portrait photos as well. Go to that site. You'll see a couple of samples of pages within the book even before you get it. And of course, like I said, it's free. So williambeam.com slash free book. All right. So why is nobody really seeing your social media posts? You got something out there. You want to share it. You want people to see it on social media and click on a link and go to whatever it is that you've linked to make them happy. And yet you could look back and maybe on Facebook, it tells you like, well, 12 people saw this. But you can promote it to see hundreds of people to see it. Yeah, I think Facebook is the one that frustrates me the most because they are playing such a big game with it. And this is nothing new. This this is nothing new and it's not exclusive to Facebook. But I've noticed it particularly because to my great frustration, I seem to have a growing audience on Facebook. And those are really my engaged followers. If I could have picked anywhere else for them to be, I would have done so because I find Facebook very time consuming compared to Twitter and Instagram and also not particularly rewarding because I think the rules there and the little games that you're susceptible to playing at the at the hands of Facebook are um, superfluous. Well, Facebook and other social media sites are constantly changing their algorithms. In other words, they're constantly tweaking and playing and doing little experiments with say, what happens if we change this? Who will see this? How will people react? But what you've got to remember is Facebook wants its users, whether you think they're your audience or engaged or not, they belong to Facebook and they want to keep them on Facebook as long as they can. Yeah. And in order to do that, they change what they will show to people who may be following your page or following your profile based upon what's in it. Yeah. And if you put a link in there, something that will take people off of Facebook they're not going to show that to many people at all. It's it's quite incredible. If you've got a page, you'll see it. If you're doing it on your personal account, there's no way to, to see the insights. But I mean, they're quite blatant about it. And I think the thing that amuses me the most is every day, whatever post I get up, I get start getting these little notifications from Facebook. This post is performing 90% better than any other, other posts on your, I think, really? Every day? Every day and is nobody, 90% it better. It was only up there for five minutes and no one's seen it yet because you haven't shown it to anybody yet. But for so much money, you can boost. I, I just thought, I, they must think I have fool written all across my face. Well, that's what they want to do is they want to sell ads. And they're trying to say, you can reach more people if they just give us $5. Okay, but here's the rub. I've never bitten to pay for an ad. Facebook's got some kind of, you know, it, there's obviously some way of tracking this. So oh, yeah. every every time I post a link, the audience reaches fewer and fewer people. But if I put in something random that has no external link in it, all of a sudden I've got a reach that covers hundreds of people. And it has got that bad now. I do a daily blog post, which I'm doing right now. It's not forever. But um, it started off where I'd have, you know, a reach of maybe 150 people on, you know, on the first day. And um, now the most recent one, two days later, reached 12. So I reposted it and I put the on Facebook and I put the link into the first comments and I just stated so in the post. All of a sudden, within a couple of hours, a few hundred people had seen it and people commented that I had no idea this was there. I didn't see it. And that's the problem. Facebook doesn't want to help you take an audience from Facebook to your site. You may have a page. They want you to engage with people on the page, but they've also shown you why you shouldn't do that. And that's because Facebook will change the rules and the audience belongs to Facebook, not to you. Yeah. So they're basically, you're, you're building your, on someone else's land. Yeah. And they can change the rules for access to the land at any time. Their audience is not your audience. You can't individually target them and, and contact them with a message saying, you may have something helpful. Like you said, there are people who reached back to you and said, I had no idea this was here. Yeah. Facebook's not showing you if you put a link in there. 
because they want to sell ads. So in other words, they say, if you want to put a link in this, you're going to give us money. It's almost like, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably going to get some blowback for saying this, but it's almost like a crack dealer. You know, <laughs> first few are, you know, maybe free or something like that just to get you hooked. They'll show it to you know, a few hundred people. Oh, this is great. Then after a while, the, yeah. the numbers start dwindling down. Like, well, you want more, you got to pay. And look, I'm not actually against paying for an ad when the time is right or if I feel it's going to serve me well. I'm also not against paying for one as an experiment. But this is not the time for me. And if I'm going to do it, I don't choose to do it right now. I, I'm not suggesting that I will never or do it or that I have a problem with it. Well, here's the real question is, where do you want to engage your audience? I want them on my website. I actually prefer when I post an article, I want the comments on the website, on the blog, not on the Facebook page. Now, and here's the thing for a lot of photographers, they don't necessarily all have a blog. They're not necessarily trying to run a business. Some, a lot of people do, or else we wouldn't be talking about it, but not everybody has a blog and they're just promoting putting things out there on social media. So if you're out there as a photographer and you're putting a photo up to share just for the sake of sharing, I don't think that you're running into quite the same issue as what we're talking about here. Oh, you're LinkedIn. probably going to be okay with, I, I mean, I think you're going to have fewer people see it on a page in general than what you are because they see a page as a business regardless of whether you're trying to link externally. But you will still get a much better reach if you're just posting without external links. So yeah, if, if you've got a page where you're sharing your stuff it's going to show up less than what it is on your personal profile. So let's say if you have lots of friends on your friends list, uh, go for it and just cross post and share it on there as well. But yeah, this is not the, this is a problem that is particularly bad with external links. I think for photographers, there are a couple of different types of people. Some want to bring use social media to bring people back to their website. And I'm, I'm one of those folks and you are as well. Yeah. Other people just want to build an audience. They want to see that their photographs are loved. And they will go to various social media sites or photo sharing sites. And if they get a lot of likes or a lot of hearts or whatever, you know, they use on a particular site, that makes them happy. Yeah. Don't click me. Tell me. I, I want I want the people, not the clicks, not the, you know, not the little likes and hearts and pluses and whatever else. Well, that's kind of what I, I want to bring people back to the website. One, that's where I've got my message. If I'm going to share my photos, I I can have much better quality on my website than I can on Facebook. I mean, Facebook is really going to trash your photos. If, one little tip, if you want to have a higher quality image show up on Facebook, don't upload a JPEG, upload a PNG because yeah. they won't compress that. Yeah. If you're trying to bring people back to your audience, you've kind of come across this a different way. You don't necessarily put a link up there or even in the comments somewhere. You just want to put it in the graphic that tells people, okay, come here. Yeah, which I've actually done now in my header post. And I want to just update it to give a slightly different way to to get to what I'm doing currently instead of just to the general site. But yep, I've actually put it in my cover photo now. Uh, I've, I've got the You've got the URL, the URL in the, in written the in there. And then you reach a wider audience just by showing it that way. They, they can't just click it. They've got to go type it type in. Type it in because you, you're not able to copy and paste either. But if the goal is for have more people see it, that's the way you do it. Yeah. And I just want to, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. There's, there's actually a reason why I want people to comment on the blog and not on Facebook or Twitter. And I'm not saying I don't want the comments there, but I don't want it instead of, I think the substantial comments and questions, I prefer them on the blog because people are coming into the blog from different places. So somebody who's reading the blog and came in from Twitter is not seeing the, the comments on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So people's comments and questions and answers and their inputs in, you know, in the comment section are actually really valuable to other people. And I often, when I'm researching something, I want to go through the comments and see who's had similar questions, who's been troubleshooting something similar or had some input or something interesting. It is helpful to everyone. I, it helps my readers more when people have all their comments where everybody's coming in, not just kind of the bus they took to get there. Well, and that's one of the things I look for when I've got a problem. You know, usually I'm searching for something. I go to a website. I don't know. I don't only want to see what's in the article. I want to see what comments people have because someone else may have solved the problem yeah. or maybe said, you know, I've got another way of doing this or I had a similar problem. I found some of my answers more in the comments than I have within the article in, in some cases. Yeah. There are tools out there to automate what you do. And we've tried a number of these things. I mean, we've got Hootsuite and we use that a little bit. There are some automation tools. When I was using CoSchedule on my blog, it would put out the post automatically one that I found that seems to do this for much less money than the other tools is called SmarterQ. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes. SmarterQ lets you put up a schedule and reuse the posts that you've made. So in other words, if you've got a blog full of posts or you've got a number of photos that you want to put up, 
it has a calendar schedule and then you can put up there like different categories. So like this is going to be uh, a technical tutorial. This one is going to be an opinion piece. This one might be self-promotion, you know, whatever the categories are that you want to put up there. And then you can schedule Facebook and Twitter. And I think they've got a few other types of social media posts and they go up there automatically. I got some engagement from using this. I got traffic from Facebook that I wasn't getting before. But I don't know that having that traffic come in necessarily did any benefits. Mm, you know what I mean? I, I know what you mean. It's kind of hard to tell unless you get a noticeable spike. And one of the things about it is you've got to really feed the monster with social media. So this was putting out, you know, Twitter stuff five times a day. And because your Twitter audience is, you know, is Moving. in and out. Yeah. And something you post is going to be gone, you know, fairly soon. It's very rare that you see somebody goes back a day or two and then likes so a tweet that you put out. Yeah, it happens occasionally, but usually not. Yeah, it happened yeah. to me with something I put out the other day, but it's rare. You know, that's why it surprised me that I saw it. Facebook, you can't really blast people on Facebook, but yet they aren't necessarily seeing what you put out there, depending upon if there's a link it or not. So we've kind of looked at this and we're questioning... Are we really trying to go out there and target just anybody? I think the answer to that is no. I mean, I'm looking for photographers for my social media posts. And is that really who we want to target? You came, kind of came back and said, I don't necessarily want to target, and if your site's about running, you don't necessarily want to target other runners. What you want to do is you want to develop sponsorships or ambassadorships. Well, on social media, yes. Um, and I want to network and engage with other runners. I I like, it's almost like my little friends hang out where we can help each other out. You know, we, we built relationships. There are people and it's, it's growing. I'm, I'm connecting with more people and we're able to message each other privately and say, look, I just found this. Does this help you? Thought about you? Uh, to me, I... I really enjoy that because for me, it's all about the people. But as far as trying to gain followers, that, that's what William means when he says, I'm, I'm not trying to reach runners. I've kind of quit on social media, trying to build up as many followers as I can. Um, I, it was never really a primary goal in any event, but I've also just got the approach now that, look, the people who are interested will come. I'm not trying to add any hashtags. I'm not trying any strategy. I mean, Instagram is just taking a big plunge for everyone. This is not the first time. Um, periodically, every few months, they change something and everyone's kind of reached just plummets and it's happening again right now. But I, I'm, I'm not going to flog a dead horse. This is Instagram is not my business. It's a platform. I get to use it for free. I've met some amazing people and I like to keep in touch with them. And a lot of us have gone on to other means of communication off the site. But it, yeah, it is very valuable and it's a lot of fun but not, um, I'm not trying to build a business on Instagram. No, and I think that's what we've really discovered is we put a lot of time and effort into social media as a means to engage an audience. And the social media sites are continually changing the rules and the audience you build up has plummeted. You know, some of those people were probably just bots in the first place. Well, yeah, actually, if I think one is, I usually just remove it as soon as I see it. But I, I do the same thing. But what I've also realized, you can put a lot of time and effort and energy into feeding social media and get very little, if any, reward back for what your true purpose is. Yeah. And I decided, you know what, I am I just don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. I, there are tools out there to help you manage social media, but, you know, you don't make any money from that. You don't bring people back to your website very often with that. When I get somebody who's seen something on social media that clicks a link, I'm, I'm very happy and I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. What I do now is kind of the advice that I think a lot of people have shared before you may want to have some kind of thing link in your profile that brings people back to something that will benefit them. So if you go to my Instagram, which is just WBeam, you're going to see a link back to that free book that I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. So that way people come back, they get a resource, hopefully that benefits them. And that also joins them on the email list. If they like what I've got on the email list, that's how I can communicate with folks. That's great. If they don't like it, then they'll unsubscribe. But at least there I can engage with people in a way that social media isn't going to do. Yeah. They're going to get the email. Whether they click it or open it is, is a different matter. And, you know, but I have a much greater reach on the email list than I do on any of my social media platforms. That's true. And I think your email people have chosen to be there. Well, they have. I mean, literally, you've got to say, yes, I confirm this. I want to get this. And I'm happy when I see somebody subscribe. I hope that they get a resource that they want. I want to keep adding to the resources that people have available to them. You know, that's why I'm working on all those little textures and things I'm putting in the free resource library. But 
that's really where I'm going is like a social media keeps changing the rules where they want money in order to show your message to somebody. And there's no guarantee that the people who see that message are necessarily interested in it. That's true. So I'm, I'm, I'm almost feeling a little bit like a downer. Now, the one thing that I do like now is Pinterest. And I really never understood how this worked before. I just started getting into it in the past few months. Pinterest is not so much about social aspects. It is a search engine. And what I found is that one also takes work. You've, in order to be found and discovered on Pinterest, you have to still keep adding pins in there. And you've only got so many that come from your own website. So you've got to be curating other people's content so that your board is interesting and then have your boards up you know, with your website up there or, or in our case, a podcast up there so that people can look at that and say, oh, I like that. I've got one pin out there for a blog post about the best way to carry your tripod. And that links to an Amazon link. I only get 88 cents when somebody buys that little tripod strap, but it happens on a regular and consistent basis. Well, that's Pinterest. It's because of Pinterest. Every time I track it back, it's like, oh, somebody found this on Pinterest. They, they, they had a problem. They wanted to know how to, the best way to, you know, carry their tripod around. The straps made sense to them. They bought it. It's very simple. It's engaging. And I'm actually seeing my numbers in Pinterest grow to the point that it certainly surpassed Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and everything else. I'm not going to quit these other services because I do get a little bit of traffic from them. It's kind of like picking up the scraps though. Yeah. So... I, I don't have time for Pinterest. No, I just, I really just, I, I am stretched to the limits right now. I, I don't have time to add one more thing. Well, that's what we're finding out, both of us. I mean, we both got things to do, we have places to go, and we, you need to spend your time where it has the most impact. And social media can be fun and it can be engaging. I like hanging out with my friends on occasion, but trying to use it and build it. I mean, you've got to come up with your graphics. You've got to make them just the right size. You've got to come up with something creative every time and then hope that that brings the audience back to your site. People who go to Facebook don't necessarily want to leave Facebook. They want oh, to go there and yeah. hang out with their friends. Yeah. So I don't see that as a place that's really been good for me to, to try and draw an audience back. It's, it's better than uh, Twitter is for me. Twitter is like at the bottom of the barrel for me. Uh, see, I love Twitter. I find Twitter so much more rewarding. I'm... Some people do. I, I don't engage well on Twitter. And we've got the Orlando local account. I mean, I've got thousands and thousands of followers there, but I think it's because of the name in Orlando. I just love Twitter because I don't get stuck there. I mean, my time, I'm juggling so many things right now and Twitter, I can get in and get out. You know, I see a Twitter notification. I can go in and five seconds flat, I can respond, engage, and the whole thing's over and we move on. That connection is still there. The people remember, but it, it doesn't take a long time. And then I just put in maybe 10 minutes, three times a day to go in there and see the people I'm following to catch up with them and make sure that I'm engaging with their things. Sometimes there's some great stuff there. I like to share it, retweet it. Um, but that's really all that, that I need to do. It, it is so much easier. And also what I found was when I'm creating graphics, um, I don't have to redo one for Twitter anymore. I, my blog posts headers have a 16 by nine um, dimension image of graphic mm -hmm. and that one just works fine for twitter so whereas i have to do a different thing for facebook if i want to show something up there i don't have to do it for twitter and it works for me i just twitter i love twitter it's just easy in and out i don't get stuck in long drawn out conversations you say what you got to say and you go one of the things i think that really works for social media though is to have a purpose in other words if you're going to be on instagram as a portrait photographer show portraits you don't want to be showing your landscape you don't want to yeah. be showing you know, your new puppy or whatever you got. Those things were all interesting, but make another account for that. If you're going to use the social media site for a photography purpose, make it about the genre of photography that you do and put up good stuff because, you know, there's a lot of mediocre photographs up there. Yeah. I try to do my best. Obviously, my level of photography has changed over the years. So every once in a while, I'll go back and look at a photo and say, you know what? That doesn't really represent what I can do now. I'll go ahead and take it off. And then again, I'll occasionally put up a photo of my dog, but it's a really nice photo of my dog. That's okay. I mean, that's, that's a portrait, right? It's a portrait. There we go. Hey, she's a blonde. All right. So that is why people aren't really paying attention to your social media anymore. Why it's not bringing it back is because the social media sites don't want anyone to leave their social media site. Thank you very much for joining us on the Photo Funky Show. Again, this is episode 94, so you can find the show notes at williambeam.com slash episode 94. There's going to be a transcript of the show there for free. 
And of course, we've got links so you can subscribe on iTunes, Google Play Music, and a few others. We'll have a couple of links on here for you and hope you have a really nice day. We'll see you again next week.